This is the story of Johnny Rando, who usually got a and of Buckaloo Jones, who also got along okay. Sometimes. Johnny and Bucky are the well-known African big game hunters. Uh, fairly well-known anyway. All right, so nobody ever heard of them. They're still African big game hunters. Well, maybe not exactly big game hunters. Small game is more in their line. African small game hunters. Of course, they uh, haven't been to Africa lately. Come to think of it, it's not exactly game they're after either. But after all, African big game is hardly as important as American big fish. This was how it all started. The best fishing spot in the whole country. And all scouts had to move in on it. I'll spot. Imagine, Johnny, I'll spot. Boy, the nerve of those guys. Of course, we didn't really own it or anything, Bucky. We discovered it, though. Sure, but how could they know that? Anyway, they probably never would have even noticed us if you hadn't tried to show off. Show off? I wanted to get a better look at their camp. Better look at their camp? Hanging from a tree by your knees? Well, everything would have been okay if it hadn't been for that darn old limb. Naturally, they saw you fall and came over to see if you were hurt. Even there, you had to show off. Show off? I was hurt. I was in agony. Uh-huh. But when they opened up that first aid kit, you sure made a quick recovery. For me, we'd probably never have met Steve Wallace and the rest of the scouts. Yeah. Remember how Steve asked us to come over and see their camp? I sure do. Boy, what a setup they had. It was about lunchtime, remember? They took us around and showed us what was going on. These guys were really organized. Yeah. That's where we first met Mr. Miller. The Scoutmaster. And Blip Martin, the patrol leader of the Eagles. Boy, I'll never forget that stew they were cooking. Man, that's what you call food. the Eagle Patrol to invite us to lunch. Yeah, too bad we ate back on the trail. It affected my appetite. I noticed. You only ate twice as much as everybody else. You know, I like that. 
that ego outfit from the first. Not only because they fed us, you understand. I understand. No, I mean, they all seem to be a bunch of real nice guys. They were a pretty hot outfit, too. Remember what we did after lunch? Yeah, that contest they had to see who could light a match with an axe. Yeah, pretty cool. Bullseye! And remember that monkey bridge they let us cross? I see why they call it a monkey bridge. So do I. How about this? Making a fire with flint and steel, just like the pioneers. Yeah. Remember how tough it looked? And yet, the first time I tried it, I got a fire. You mean you got smoke? <laughs> well, where there's smoke, there's fire. Funny how quick that afternoon passed. Almost before we knew it, it was time to start for home. Remember how we wished we could spend the night there with the troop? Yeah, it seemed like we've known this gang for years. I hated to leave. Then good old Blip saved our life and invited us over to their next troop meeting. Uh-huh, I thought he'd never ask. Say, you know what? What? We forgot to go fishing. <laughs> Charlie, here. Oh, come on. Yeah. Where's Charlie? Yeah. 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 Where's Charlie? So here we are at our first troop meeting. Remember it, Bucky? I'll say. Remember how strange and kind of scared we felt? All those guys we didn't know and everything. Yeah. But then Blip came to our rescue and made us feel right at home. Right. He introduced us to the whole troop and really got us off on the right foot. This is John. Uh-huh. Meet the gang. Hi. Hi. And Steve Wallace asked us if we ever played that Where's Charlie game before. And you told him yes. Remember what happened? Well, it looks like they finally made it, huh? Yeah, yeah. they sure did. Where's Charlie? Here. Oh! Oh, oh Blip. Well, we got permission for you to use a campsite marked here on the map. Later that evening, the Eagle Patrol took us in as recruits, and we sat in with them when they planned a patrol hike. Yeah, that was when we found out we couldn't go on a hike unless we made tenderfoot. So naturally, we started learning the ropes right quick, and I do mean ropes. One of the first thing we learned is that knots are fun. The idea was to learn how, then practice it in a game. We watched the older scouts demonstrate it, then tried it ourselves. The deal was for each scout to tie a bowler knot around his waist, then tie his rope to his partner's with a square knot. Yeah, and then lean back quick. If you are square knot held, you had no problem. Say, that was the time I tried to square knot, wasn't it? And there was, a uh, yeah, something wrong with the rope. <laughs> yeah, Bucky, something wrong with the rope. Well, Johnny, here we're getting our tenderfoot. In spite of everything, we made it. Remember how we got our new badges? And then Mr. Miller let us in the oath. Now the scout oath. On my, my honor, honor, I will I do my, my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, law. to help other people at all times, times. to keep, keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, awake and, and morally straight. straight. Well, this is it, our first hike with the Eagle Patrol. It was a cross-country hike, remember? No roads or trails or anything, 
We just plowed through the woods. We sure did. Lucky we had a map and a compass. We had to learn to use them in a hurry. I guess that was the idea. It takes a good man to use a compass right. Now take me here, for instance. First, I take a bearing on a tree or something and start toward it. See how I plow straight ahead without taking my eyes off that tree? Not everybody can do that, you know. Sure, sure. Just keep your feet moving in the right direction and don't stop for anything. Well, hardly anything. <laughs> We got to our camping spot just in time for lunch. There was only one catch. If there was going to be any lunch, we had to cook it. That meant knowing what we were doing. Yeah, it's a good thing I was there to take charge. It also meant getting the food ready to cook. No pots and pans out here, of course. We cooked with aluminum foil. You wrap your raw food carefully in the foil and seal it up tight. Then place it in the coals of your fire and cover it with more coals. And then you get something like this. Of course, if you forget to wrap it in the foil, and you put your potato in the fire like this, you get something like this. After lunch, we went exploring along the creek. Yeah. Hey, remember some of the interesting things we saw down there? Seems like everywhere we looked, we saw something different. Funny. How come we never noticed all these things on our fishing trips? I don't know. Maybe we were just too busy fishing and missed some of the other things. Yeah, I seem to recall we missed quite a few of the fish, too. afternoon, we learned how to stalk. One fellow would take off through the woods, and his buddy would try to sneak up on him. The idea was to keep him in sight without being seen yourself. If you think it's easy, try it sometime. When the rabbit gets tired, he stops and waits for the fox to catch up with him. If the fox can sneak up behind him without being seen, he's got it made. Of course, not many foxes make it. again. Have fun, Bucky. Right up to the very end. Remember what we saw along the trail? I sure do. it is. Take hobbies, for instance. Whatever you like to do, there's a scout merit badge for it. Everything from camping to chemistry. Johnny started off with archery. 
and I tackled athletics. Hey, what's this? Another merit badge? It's our first overnight hike. Oh, it was so quiet, I didn't recognize it. We must have been real tired. Man, I'll say we were tired. Remember all the things we did that day? Let's see. We hiked in that morning, and we put the tents up. And then in the afternoon, we had that big adventure race, remember? Running through lost woods. And sending a message from Bobcat Hill over to the island. Getting across Dead Man's Creek without getting wet. got down to the old hermit shack. Remember what we found? Brother, I'll say I remember. It was all part of the act. Only for a couple of minutes there, I thought it was the real thing. That was the idea, to see how we'd act in an emergency. Well, as I recall, we did okay. But man, he sure looked awful. Don't be afraid, Bucky. It's all done with red paint. the day with singing and stunts around a big campfire. Even roasted a few marshmallows. And finally taps blew, and we went to sleep. And the skies are not cloudy all day. <sighs> and then we heard something we hadn't heard all day. What was that? Silence. Scouts, the biggest deal in the whole year is summer camp. Remember Bucky? I'll say there were so many things to do up there we hardly knew where to start. Most of us started somewhere on the waterfront. It was one of the most popular places in camp. There was instruction for those who couldn't swim and plenty of swimming for those who could. Also fancy diving. The big camp rule was, learn it before you do it, because it's always more fun when you know how. Take canoeing, for instance. First, you learn this. Then you can do this. If you like to make things, the Handicraft Lodge is for you. Leatherwork, metalwork, wood carving, beadwork, you name it. they've got. Like to snap a few at a target? Well, we just happen to have a sharp rifle range complete with expert instructor.
into the dark and stormy night. A band of there was a rumor there were Indians in camp. We didn't believe it, though, until one night at the campfire. something that wasn't on the camp program at all. The day the state police came in and asked the scouts help to find a little girl who was lost in the woods. Remember how they got us all together and got organized for the search party, Bucky? Yeah. The troops were all put into long lines and sent into the woods where the little girl was last seen. Only they didn't want to overlook any place, so they sent teams of scouts along all the trails in the area just in case. Right. We were one of those teams. They assigned us the old trail to Ghost Cave, remember? The trail hadn't been used for years, and it was all we could do to follow it. We had a compass and a map, though, so we weren't afraid of getting lost ourselves. Not much afraid, anyway. We stayed on the trail quite a while, but we didn't see a single sign. It was beginning to get late, too, and we were ready to turn back. Then we spotted something that changed our minds in a hurry. A shoe. A shoe that looked like it hadn't been there long. It looked like the girl crossed here, all right. But which way was she going? If we could only find footprints. There they were, and they were leading off toward the thickest part of the woods. This meant knowing exactly where we were going. So we checked our position on the map, and we took a careful compass reading. Nothing but deep woods and heavy brush, and no trail at all. And so quiet, it was almost... What do you mean, almost? But we had to find that little girl, no matter what. It was right about here that lots of things started to add up and made enough. All those hikes we took, the compass and map work, the tracking and stalking, the first aid we might need, and all the rest. If we could find that little girl, all these things would really pay off. And you know what? They did. That's about it, isn't it, Bucky? Almost. Except, I'd like to say we're sure glad we joined up with a great outfit like the Scouts. Gee, Johnny, I wonder if there's many guys like we were. You know, who want to join the Scouts? Only nobody ever asked them. Well, there's no trick to joining. All you have to do is... Well, if there's a troop in your neighborhood, just drop in and let them know you're interested. Or find a friend who's a Scout to take you to their meeting. Or maybe your dad. Sure. And if you don't know any scouts or troops... Just pick up your phone book and look on the Boy Scouts. Uh, uh, the white pages, not the yellow pages. And give them a call. They'll be glad to help. 
right. So long, everybody. This was the story of Johnny Randall and Buckaloo Jones. <laughs>